Hey friends, welcome to my living room. Come on in, make yourself at home because I've been working on this gallery wall for months and it is almost complete. I have this cute little vintage frame that's going to finish everything. And all I need to do is make a cute little vintage inspired floral painting to go in it. I'm going to use one of my favorite flowers, the geranium, and one of my favorite pigments, Payne's Gray, and we're gonna create something lovely. And I have another special ingredient in this gallery wall, and that is my own watercolor floral print. Yes, you can now buy Shada Campbell prints as well as some originals on my website. The print shop is open. Go check it out, shadacampbell.com. Get yourself a little something floral. What's up friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and we are gonna jump right into this wonderful watercolor project. If you want the full supply list, that is at the end of the video and there are chapters in the video description. So today I'm going to be painting on this cold pressed block. I've got a five by seven area masked out with washi tape that'll just give me a clean white border. And then on my sketchbook or scrap paper, I also have a five by seven area marked here. And that's where we wanna begin with a pencil and some scrap paper and we'll start to sketch and I am sketching some geraniums. So I begin with some ovals and those are where the geranium blossoms will actually sit. I'm doing a horizontal painting because that's what I need for my gallery wall. I find flowers are easier to do in portrait style or vertical. So what I'm gonna do is draw a pot of geranium, but I'm sort of starting at the top of the pot. You don't really see the pot. So I've marked where I want the flowers to sit and then I'm kind of surrounding them with some scruffy but big round leaves, those geranium leaves. And you can kind of see the top of the flower pot. And then once I'm sort of happy with the way the flower is shaped and looking, I'll start sketching in all the little blossoms that make up those geranium flowers. And you can kind of see it coming together, but I say this in every video, if you're doing a sketch, don't just try to start drawing perfectly. You want to begin with a guide. So mark where those flowers are going to sit, etc., etc. And I think my geranium's looking kind of cute. We could put another little flower up top here <laughs> and it is coming together. Now, step two in our sketching process is to refine. So I take a Sharpie or fine liner and I start going over my sketch. This gives me the chance to you know, change little things, maybe make a flower bigger or a leaf smaller. Drawing on top of something is a very comfortable feeling because you kind of know where you want to go. It's not as scary as a blank page, so it gives you the chance to add little details. And then what's she doing now? Well, I am tracing. I am further refining that initial sketch. Tracing allows me to keep what I like, change what I don't, and it's also part of the transferring process. And we'll talk about that in a sec. So there's my trace. If I flip to a fresh page, you can see what it looks like. Everything is sitting off to the right-hand side, and I'm gonna have a lot of negative space on the left-hand side of my painting, but I'm getting ahead of myself. What we wanna do now is flip over that trace, cover the back in graphite, just pencil. And then this is how we are going to get our sketch, which we have refined and perfected onto our watercolor paper. So grab that little bit of washi tape. We'll tape the sketch in place. You can see all that lovely negative space on the left-hand side. And I am just tracing over the entire sketch with a nice sharp mechanical pencil. And that is going to transfer my sketch onto the watercolor paper. If you have some smudges, they're easy to erase and now we are ready to paint. I've decided to start with the leaves and stems. It's just a nice easy part of the painting I think that's a lot of fun to paint. So I have sap green here mixed with a little brown and I also have hooker's green or deep thallo green mixed with brown and I'm just going to take like a number six or number eight round brush and we're just going to start basically coloring in or painting in these big round shaggy leaves. And what I like to do is put some pigment down and then maybe I just wet my brush, clean it up a bit and with a damp clean brush I come back in and add some lighter water to the leaf so that one part of the leaf is a little darker and one is a little lighter, the transparency is a little different. With leaves, you can really just play around, work a little wet into wet. So lay down a light green and then release some darker pigment into the wet area. Leaves are your chance to play around. You want the, the difference in color and opacity um, because that will make your leaves look really lively and organic, but it doesn't really matter where you 
you put the darker bit or the lighter bit or whatever. So just have fun with this. And then when it comes to actually adding some shadow, we can do that with a wet on dry technique. So once these leaves have dried. Now here I've started really light with this leaf and then I come back in with a slightly darker green and I just release it into the wet area, a few little dots. And that just blends out so beautifully and it gives a really organic and natural coloring to my leaf. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. A nice medium sort of light green. So that green has lots of water in it. And then I released some darker pigment, pigment with a little less water. And then as these leaves dry, I continue to maybe add a few dots of darker green. For the areas between the flowers, I'm just doing a super light green and maybe adding a little bit of darker pigment into the mix so that it kind of hints at leaves sitting in behind the flowers. And then now that my leaves are painted, I'm going to do the flower pot and I'm using a similar technique with a little wet into wet. So I'm kind of just coloring in, painting in the top of that flower pot. I'm using a mix of Van Dyke Brown and light red. So I've got kind of a terracotta look, but you could just use like a red brown or really any brown color here will do. And then I released a little bit of darker pigment into the wet area. I just wanna get some interesting colorations there. There's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it. As I said, with the leaves, we can do kind of some more proper shadow and shading uh, with a wet on dry technique. So once everything has dried. And then let me work on some stems. So just using the tip of my round brush here to paint in the thin stem that comes out and sort of fans out at the top towards the flower, towards all the blossoms. And I kind of used like a very, very light green there to just do some tiny little leaves or maybe that would be considered the sepal. Um, but yeah, just going right over the leaves using a slightly darker green here. And it's really these long, almost straight stems that give the geranium the real geranium look. So we definitely want to capture those stems. And they have, of course, all the seeds sitting uh, right below the blossoms or not seeds, but buds, <laughs> seeds. Oh boy. <laughs> With that looking good, we're going to move on to the flowers. This is my favorite part. So you can do your geraniums any color you want. I'm going to do a light salmon. So I started with lots of white and water. I put like a hint of red in there. Um, and then I am going to grab a whole lot of that Jaune Brilliant, that peachy color that's sitting right beside the white. I mix lots and lots of water in there. That first petal, I thought, oh, that's pretty dark. That's pretty opaque. So I mixed in more water and we're going to do these geraniums. And they're basically just a whole bunch of brush strokes or sort of oval shaped petals. And some are going to be a little darker, some a little lighter. And that's going to give us a good, strong base for painting the flower in detail. So do some light kind of brush strokes, some darker brush strokes. We're just basically painting a cluster of oval shaped brush strokes. Some of them are quite light. Some are a little bit darker. You can work that wet into wet, you know, doing a bunch of light brush strokes and then going back in with a little pop of that darker peach or darker pink. I mentioned my print shop and my new prints that are available at the start of this video. And I just wanted to say a special thank you to everyone that has already shopped and supported me and my small business and supported my art. I'm loving all aspects of my print shop. I love packaging up your orders. I always try to put a little something extra in there, a little card from me, just because I want you to know that it means the world to me that you're supporting this, this business of mine. All right, with that done, we're going to grab some clean water because we're also going to use a bit of Payne's Gray. Now, if you don't have tube paints, that's fine. The nice thing about tube paints, though, is that it's easy to mix up a whole lot of one color. Oh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. What are we actually doing? We're painting the background. <laughs> so if you're using pan paints, that's fine. You just want to mix up a whole lot of whatever color you're going to use, whether it's black or beige or Payne's Gray, like I'm doing on your palette. But if you have happen to have a tube paint, now is the time to use it because it allows you to mix up a whole lot of a uh, single color and that's good when you need to do something like a background or a large sky or whatever it may be. With the background, you want to move fairly quickly and use a nice watery fluid paint and we're just going to fill in everywhere, going right up against the flowers and leaves. You can 
practice doing some blooms uh, while the pigment is still wet. You just release a drop or two of water and watch what happens. The pigment that was initially on the paper will actually move and you get a very cool effect that's great for uh, clouds actually but I also find it's very nice for backdrops when you just kind of want a like a bouquet look. Uh, if you need more information about stuff like blooms and lifting and all these techniques that we're talking about, like wet into wet and wet on dry, I do have a couple watercolor e-courses, both of them with a focus on flowers. You'll find them both on my website, shadacampbell.com. And if you're wondering what makes them different from the YouTube channel, well, on YouTube, we're very entertainment focused. We always do projects. In the courses, we get into the nitty gritty of technique and I help you to find your very own own style, which I think is really important, especially in that second course. It's all about finding your own voice as an artist. Anywho, let's get back to what's actually happening here. I'm using a bit of paper towel to lift and it just helps me to lift up some of the pigment. And again, it creates that bokeh backgroundy look and uh, you can always grab a paper towel, a cotton ball, and it's a great way to um, pick up or erase some of the pigment that you have on your paper. Anywho, I'm really digging this gray background. I think it's going to look lovely as part of my gallery wall and it's going to give my painting sort of a vintagey vibe. Now with the background complete, I can begin what I've been talking about for this whole video, which is to do a little wet on dry. And with a wet on dry technique, we can be very precise. So our pigment's not going to move. It's gonna stay where we put it. That allows us to do detail work. Like if you wanna put some lines on some of those leaves, um, or we can just lay down some really dark blotches of green and help to further the shading and the shadow on these geranium leaves. I'm also going to run a little darker line uh, down the stems to help them appear a little bit more three-dimensional. You know, so we're just playing around at this point and adding some details. You'll know what looks right for your painting. The leaves are really popping. I think they look good. And now I'm gonna do actually a similar thing on the flower pot. So work a little wet on dry. I'm gonna take a slightly darker brown and just do like some shading, make the um, bottom a little darker. And you can kind of see now that there's a defined lip. I'm also adding some dark brown right under the leaves because the light wouldn't hit there as easily. They would cast a bit of a shadow. And then I guess I'm all into lifting now. So I grabbed a little paper towel, lifted a bit of pigment. It's helping to give my terracotta pot a nice texture and the look of a flower pot that's really old and has been left out for all of the seasons and has that, you know, earthy vibe. Ah, uh, and then that brings me to, you know, the next step, which you probably guessed, we're going to do some wet on dry, but on the flowers. So what I wanna do is focus on adding darker pigment. So this is that same Jaune Brilliant with a bit of white, bit of red, but there's not quite as much water mixed in. It's still fluid, you know, it still goes on the page with a really beautiful fluid motion, but it, you can see it is darker. And I wanna focus on placing these darker brush strokes on the lower part of the flowers. So I've decided that my light source is above, and that means that the flowers are all going to be very light at the top and darker at their base or on the bottom. And I'm just doing some random brush marks. You know, I love a loose floral. I'm not getting too super detailed. I'm just playing around and then I'm completing the flowers by putting um, some little dots to show kind of the very center of some of those blossoms. And I think that looks really nice. Oh, this was a fun painting, right? I think this was fun. Um, it was different for me. And you know, if you're stuck in a creative rut or you're just not sure what to paint, what to put in that sketchbook, I think sometimes finding an old frame, if you can find something at Goodwill or Value Village, it's like, let the frame guide you as to what goes in it. Maybe a flower that, or a floral piece, or a portrait that just has a bit of a vintagey vibe. I really enjoy this. I wanted some grays and pinks and something a little bit romantic, something that would look good in my living room. And that's exactly what I did. And I could be done at this point. We could be done. Or we could grab a little white gouache. And I'm just going to put a little pebble size amount in my palette here, or my little uh, paint 
<laughs> why can't I talk? My little paint dish. And then you're going to mix water into that gouache. You want it to be a nice watery consistency. If you don't want white, you can mix in a little of that pink paint and you'll get this nice light, light pink. And gouache is wonderfully opaque. So anywhere where you have kind of a funny area where the flower meets that gray background, the gouache will allow you to kind of touch up, put a bit of a highlight, and you won't have that harsh line where gray meets pink. So the gouache is kind of saving us from any heartache um, that we might have got from putting a dark background right up against a light flower. Yes, squash, the secret ingredient that we all need in our watercolors. If that's all there is to it, a few brush strokes and I am done. I let that dry completely, washed my vintage frame while I was waiting, placed the painting in the frame and hung it on the gallery wall. I also put one of my prints in this other frame, got rid of that weird cat that was there. <laughs> and if you would like to shop, the Shada Campbell print shop is now open. There's even a few originals available. So head over to my website, shadacampbell.com. Thanks for watching. Now here's your supply rundown. I use scrap paper or a sketchbook, a pencil and a fine liner. You could also use a Sharpie or any marker. You'll find it useful to have a ruler as well as washi tape. Then you'll need your watercolor paper. And I used a seven by 10 cold pressed block from Canson. So seven by 10 is the size, cold pressed is the paper type and 140 pound is the weight. You'll need your paint brushes, couple round paint brushes should do the trick as well as tracing paper, possibly graphite transfer paper. And then you'll want whatever set of watercolor paints you love to use. Remember, all my supplies are linked in the video description. Shopping those Amazon links is a great way to support this channel.